Australia, we're the envy of the world with our high standard of living and our magnificent lifestyle. But we often forget it was the hard work and the perseverance of the early pioneers, the early settlers, our ancestors, who laid the foundations for the great industries, agriculture, mining, tourism, that we all rely on. And as we sit in our comfortable lifestyles, we often forget the sheer courage, the valor, and the personal sacrifice of those early pioneers. So we thought, let's take some young Australians out of their comfort zone and bring them here for a taste of the pioneering spirit. On Easter Sunday, 1883, the MacDonald brothers, William and Charlie, set out from Goulburn in New South Wales in search of their new home at the junction of the Margaret and Fitzroy rivers in the Kimberley region of West Australia. Their destination was a tree marked F136, which was where their brother Dan had got a lease of 100 square kilometres of land and where they would establish the first cattle station in the Kimberley. The incredibly harsh journey of some 5,600 kilometres took them three years and the brothers lost their father, they lost half their cattle and lost most of their horses along the way. But as pioneers did, they persevered and eventually made it to this very spot, the historic Fossil Down Station. Their journey was the longest cattle drive in Australian history and so famous is the station that in 1972 it hosted members of the royal family on their visit to the northwest. We wanted our young city slickers to experience Australia through the eyes of our earliest pioneers. So we brought them here to the historic and magnificent Fossil Downs cattle station deep in the heart of the Kimberley in the furthest corner of Western Australia so that they could get an inkling of just how tough life really was for our original pioneers. My name is Lauren. I'm from Perth by the beach. I would definitely describe myself as more of a city girl. I'm not 100% sure if I would have made a good pioneer, I'm going to be honest with you, but I'm very interested in learning about how they did live because I don't really know a lot about how they lived, how they established the society. My name is Connor and I'm 20 years old. I grew up in Western Australia, in the metropolitan area. Uh, definitely a city slicker. Uh, I think the way I'd cope with a pioneering life would be difficult, especially someone that's been pulled out of the city like myself. When you're out in the bush, it's just you and the outback. My name is Hannah and I grew up in Melbourne in Victoria. I'm a little bit scared about some of the challenges that we might face on this trip. These harsh conditions out here are a little bit more remote than what I'm used to, so it's definitely going to be tough out here. Hey, look at this. Here we are. That's beautiful. Hotel Kimberley, first class <laughs> accommodation. Here we go, let's get the gear. Come on, let's get into it. Who wants the comfy ensuite? <laughs> Bags the bit not near the crocodiles. Oh yeah, not near the crocodiles for me. <laughs> Will you look, look at this? So peaceful. Uh, you know what we've forgotten? I would maybe? You got it, you got it. I would. We've got to heat, we've got to cook, we've got to stay warm. Let's go for it. Great, great work, guys. Do you think it'll be enough to get us started, Rowan? I reckon. Yeah, we need some rocks, guys. It's not bad for a city slicker. <laughs> oh, looking great. Hey, Hannah, have you got the dampers? Uh, getting there. We're going to add in now a little bit of this milk and vinegar mixed together. So I just need a little bit more water in this one. Um, are, you, are you good to grab me a little bit, please? Yeah. So, yeah, just a tiny bit in there. This is the critical moment, Connor. If you blow this, we don't have dinner. It's a very fine line. So how do you cook it? Uh, so what we're going to do is kind of uh, make it into a little ball, roll it out, and then pop it on a stick. And we'll just kind of hold it over the embers of the fire and, uh, yeah, cook it off. That looks amazing. Mm. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, rock pool, eat your heart out. 
This is the true pioneering spirit right here. How's it taste? Connor? It's pretty good, Rowan. It's uh, a little bit on the salty side. We had Lauren Master Chef, what would, what would it get? Solid six. Oh. Mate, you're tucking into that. Looks pretty good. What is it? Uh, just some Kimberley kidney beans here. Straight out of the can, that's the only way to eat these beans, isn't it? What you got? Uh, I've actually got a little bit of creamed rice, um, but, you know, I, I prefer a bit more variety. Why do they eat so much from cans? Well, you tell me. Well, I, I don't know. I'm assuming because it's, you know, uh, easy to take around and it's you know, non-perishable. When you're out for months and months and months droving, travelling, the pioneers, they, you know, they couldn't do the, you know, all the fancy cuisine, so it's out of the can you go. True story, guys. When they were making the homestead up there at Fossil Downs back in the 1930s, they had to make the bricks here on the river. They were doing this one day, the family, and suddenly, you know, it's middle of, we're in the middle of nowhere here, and they're stacking all the bricks all along here to dry, when suddenly an aeroplane oh. comes flying down across oh. the river and drops a bloody note outside, and this <laughs> note comes falling down and lands, and they go, what, what on earth is They pick this note up, and it says that further up, the river is rising really rapidly. So from 2.30 in the afternoon through to 8 o'clock the following morning, they by hand took the 10,000 bricks up this, up this river bank up here. Uh, they got them all out and then the river came through, took all of this out, the whole thing. And they built the house with those bricks. Wow. So the moral of the story, I always say, when an aeroplane flies down mm -hmm. overhead and drops you a note, read the yeah. note. Wake up, come on guys, come on. Morning is here, morning is here. We're not gonna sit around all day. Come on, do you think William and Charlie McDonald got the luxury to lie in? Hey guys, come on, we've got bricks to build. Connor, come on, how'd you sleep? Oh, not so great, Rowan. No? I had a guts full with the mozzies. Just the mozzies? And the fear of snakes as well. Well, it looks like one went straight through here. I think there are definitely scary sides to being a pioneer. There's a lot out in the Australian bush that I would not want to face, you know. We've seen some snakes already, seen some crocodiles this morning, so, you know, there's definitely a few things that I wouldn't want to come across. You're really in the unknown, and I think that's definitely a, a scary element to it. Come on, girls, let's get a move on. Come on, we've got a lot of work to do. Hey, how did you sleep, Hannah? Terribly. Oh, really? Yeah, Why is this that? mattress is not good. Have you seen how thin it is? Do you think the pioneers got to worry about the thickness of the mattress? Oh, probably not, but I'm Pro used to nicer things. So. How are you? Well, we're going to change that. I think the thing I miss most about creature comforts from home would probably be uh, easy access to a nice kitchen. You've got a nice fridge, easy to cook, easy to make your meals. I think camping makes it a little bit trickier. Digging the bush toilet was probably one of the lower points of the trip. I don't think I'd be going to the toilet in the bush anytime soon. It's not my preferred choice of bathroom. I'd much prefer my nice white bathroom at home. Today we're building bricks, did I tell you? What? Yeah, bricks? You, you know I mentioned 10,000 bricks last night? Oh. That wasn't by no. accident. Lauren, Lauren, how did you sleep? Terribly. Fresh as a daisy, ready to go? No. Why not? It was too hot. Last night was like air conditioning. That is what the McDonald's and the early pioneers called air conditioning, sleeping under the stars. So you're ready to go, you're ready for breakfast, you're ready to work. Be no, I you... want to go home. I don't think you'll find a point where Lauren gives up. I'm not ready to give up. I don't, that's not something that I like to do, so. <laughs> home is 5,600 kilometers that way by foot. This is your new home. No Instagram, the pioneers couldn't check their account and see what their friends were up to. This is home. This is terrible. You're gonna need your strength for building bricks, so eat up. If the pioneers didn't eat enough, that was it, it was all over. When they got food, they wolfed it down. They wouldn't have been going one bean at a time. So wolf it down, off you go. I'd like you guys to tell me where you're gonna start building bricks. 
Over there looks all right. Yeah, maybe, maybe in that spot right over there. And pioneers do not fail. So we're going to build these bricks, right? You ready? You convinced? Not really. It is getting a bit hot out here. It's only going to get hotter. So the way you make mud bricks from the river is you start off with the riverbank sediments and rocks and you put them into a wooden frame and then alongside limestone um, dust and gravel and water you put it in um, layer by layer until you fill the entire wooden frame and then you wait for it to dry in the hot baking sun until you've got your mud brick. So, you enjoy making bricks, guys? Tough stuff. Yeah. Really good, really good. You got the recipe right. You added the right amount of water, Lauren. These ones have had a couple of days to bake in the casts. And uh, let's tip them out and see how we go. OK, so we've got three or four bricks we've done. <laughs> we need 10,000 to build the house, but we won't worry about that now. They're no good down here in the riverbed. We've got to get them up to the house. So uh, grab your bricks and let's head off. All the way, up the hill. Oh. Come on, Lauren, come on. You're doing well, Lauren. You're getting there. Only 9,997 more to go, guys, and we'll be right. There we go. The McDonald's had to carry 10,000 of these before the river came. They worked from 2.30 in the afternoon right through until 8 o'clock the next morning, shifting 10,000 bricks, guys. And the hands were bleeding, broken fingernails, absolute nightmare, but they had to do it. No choice. The worst moment for me was carrying the mud bricks. I couldn't actually get the mud brick off the ground. <laughs> Wasn't quite strong enough. Probably should have lifted some weights before this trip, but trying to drag that across the dirt was quite hard. <laughs> And then we only did three of them, so imagine continuing to do them hour after hour until you've reached 10,000 bricks. This part of the Kimberley, it's called Fossil Downs. The downs that we've walked through, downs go for millions of acres. That's the land, the black earth, the beautiful soil, for the cattle, best cattle country in the world. But why is it called fossil downs? Those fossils are of crustaceans. This, you want climate change? You want rising sea levels? This was like the Great Barrier Reef 30 million years ago. You are standing on it. We were under the ocean here. 30 million years ago, this was beautiful coral, fishes, Limestone Ridge all there, Great Barrier Reef. It's called the Devonian Reef. Why is this important? Because it's the quality of the soil, the limestone, the minerals. This is what they came here for. But you can see here, little crustaceans from 30 million years ago are still there. And the downs and fossil downs, that means treeless plains, doesn't it, Rowan? You got it, and plenty of those out there. <laughs> and the cattle love them. So the McDonald brothers travelled all the way from Goulburn. Took them three years to get here for this soil, for those downs. They'd read about them, they'd heard about them. They had to find them. Amazing story. But millions of years ago, this was the bottom of the ocean. Did you bring your snorkel, Lauren and Hannah? <laughs> They're one of the few things out here that don't bite, hey, Rowan? <laughs> Today we saw a lot of crocs in the, the riverbeds and uh, let me tell you so far they're the meanest animal we've come across. Just their piercing eyes when they look at you really send shivers down your back. They're pretty scary, I haven't seen them in the wild before so that's a big change. They're really hard to like see and I bet they'd be hard to catch. I think the pioneers probably would have hunted a kangaroo, maybe a bit of goanna, but I think it'd be a bit tricky to hunt these crocs. You know, they're dipping up and down, so it's a bit tricky to try and see them, but they look like they have a lot of meat on them, so they might be quite tasty. I've actually had crocodile before. It tasted a bit like fishy chicken, kind of, salty chicken. It was kind of strange, but yeah, it wasn't half bad. They'd be a good meal if you managed to get one.
So girls, you told me you love your music. Well, this is a replica of the McDonald's original music box. It's pretty impressive they brought it all the way over here, actually. You know, it's quite big and they got it from Goulburn to the Kimberley on horseback. It's impressive. Must have loved their music. Yeah, they must have, hey? Yeah, what music did they actually listen to on it? Queen. Not that Queen. <laughs> God Save the Queen. That was the greatest hit back then. It inspired them, drove them forward, Connor, and it's going to have to inspire you because you've got to take it all the way back down again. <laughs> I would have preferred an iPhone, Rowan. <laughs> nice one. Let's have a listen. <laughs> God save the Queen. Look around you, it goes as far as the eye can see in every direction. Okay, the pioneers had the land, but you've got to contain the cattle, otherwise the cattle will wander off. And the only way they could contain the cattle is with fence lines. So they had to build the fences from the raw materials, we're not going to do all of that, don't worry, <laughs> but we will dig one. First thing is the crowbar. You jiggle and wiggle to break up the ground. Jiggle and wiggle. That's it. And you're doing well. Keep breaking up that ground. Just slam it down harder. That's it. Get your dirt there. It's got to be deep enough to take this post. OK, work as a team. Bit more jiggle and wiggle to break up the dirt. That's it. Jiggle it down harder. This is in the middle of the day for days on end, months on end of this sort of work. All those fences you drive past you don't even think about, eh? Yeah, it'd be hard trying to fence this, all this land around us. It'd be a really big job. What do you reckon? How are you going? I don't know about that. I'm sweating already. <laughs> I think it's amazing that the they worked so hard in the heat, working day in, day out on horses, not having the type of hats that we have now or the type of coverage clothes that we have now. Like, it would have been really hard for them. Pounding away on that earth, guys. Get it nice and solid. You don't want this thing to fall over. OK, guys, let's see your work. Let's see your handiwork. And yes! Hey. Easy. <laughs> there you go. Looks good. This first fence post, guys. <laughs> Now, I've only got 1,200 more to do that way and 1,200 more to do that way. Cattle, aren't they fantastic? They are at the heart of our nation. They are at the heart of our agricultural industries, at the heart of our history and our national identity. And they are at the heart of Fossil Down Station, the first cattle station here in the Kimberley where they came 140 years ago. Nowadays of course we use helicopters, we use quads, we use motorbikes, but we still use horses just like they did the McDonald's 140 years ago on this very spot. Aren't they fantastic? I don't think it does occur to people that, you know, the wealth of the nation and a lot of the, the resources that we have today stem way back from when the pioneers were here because people just aren't made aware or, you know, sort of don't, don't recognise that, that connection. That was, a, that was quite a climb. You guys are looking a lot fitter than me, eh? That was great. The, here we are, right at the heart of Fossil Downs. The fossils underneath us, You've got the downs stretching as far as the eye can see in every direction. Now, this is the original cattle station of the Kimberley. So it was the McDonald's, the brothers, William and Charlie and their dad, who set out from Goulburn in 1883 on Easter. It took them three years to get here. No GPSs, they had to do it all. They were looking for one thing. They were looking for a tree, a tree labelled F136. It's out there somewhere. They knew it. They'd come on horses. You guys, today, you're on horses. You're going to be looking for that same tree. I've done much horse riding, so we'll see how this goes. What's the first thing that you would think of that you need when you're heading out on a 17-kilometre horse ride? What's the first thing you need? Probably water, Rowan. You got it. 
finding the water is really important out here because you need to stay hydrated. You're in the sun all day, especially if you're doing hard manual labour like building a fence. You really need to keep hydrated or you'll get really sick and you'll diminish fast. You hear that? That's the black cockatoos. Now, Lauren, you're our, our self-appointed water collector. Did you know that it was the black cockatoos that would lead the early settlers and pioneers? That's, they would follow them to find the water. Wow, that's really interesting. It is. So these are the original water tanks, the very ones that the McDonald's took all the way across Australia to get here. Those water tanks kept them alive. It's the critical thing you need for the pioneering mentality, for the, what they had to achieve. Now, Lauren, I want you to fill this up. I want you to drink the water over there. That looks disgusting, Rowan. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, I think it'd be better if we fill it up over there where it's running and fresh. Nice. I like your thinking like a pioneer now. Now, that's great. Stagnant water is poisonous. It will kill you. The fresh running water over there, let's fill it up, guys. Watch the spider in front of you. Lauren, what do you think of the spider there? I'm not a big fan of spiders, so scare me a bit. If you were a pioneer, you would brush that spider away with your hand. It's so scary. I think I was genuinely scared of the spiders. <laughs> I don't really know why I'm so scared of spiders, but they really freak me out. So that was quite hard standing so close to them. OK, guys, I've got a couple of treats here for you. You've worked hard. You deserve it. I've been saving this up specially. You know those boab trees we've seen going around? They absorb all the water. Tell you that you're in the Kimberley for sure. Well, these are the boab nuts. Oh, and you can eat these? You certainly can. A treat, a real treat. You've got to crack them open. not the greatest. Well, describe it. Describe the flavour. It's kind of like sour and salty. Connor, what do you reckon, mate? For one of Mother Nature's treats, it's pretty nice. Oh, good. <laughs> it's easier to eat than Hannah's damper the other night. <laughs> oh, a bit savage, Connor. He can source his own dinner tonight. That's uh, <laughs> soft cards now. The treats in the Boab, I mean, you know. Better than Hannah's dampers. That could be the motto of the show. There you go. <laughs> Whoa, I think the horse gave the final verdict on the Boab nuts. Good girl. Through here, come on. Through there. Straight ahead, come on. That's it, come on. You know, hang on, have a, I think we've been here before. Yeah, we might need to correct course a little have we bit. We've gone wrong. It must be over there, the tree, or is it over there? Somewhere over that way, I think, if we kind of yeah. keep, keep heading reckon? this direction. Now, this is the problem for the pioneers. You know, nowadays we could go to Google Maps or pull out our iPhone, but they had none of that stuff. Every tree looked the same. That's why they had a compass. Connor, did you bring the compass? Well, no, Rowan, but funnily enough, you can use your watch. Ah, OK, talk us through it. Yeah, so the best way to do that, Rowan, would be to point the watch face towards the sun where the sun shines between the 12 and the hour hand will be our north. So we want to head that way towards F136. Okay. You know we've got to get there by sunset, otherwise I don't know what's going to happen to us. Let's keep it moving, guys. Come on, sir. It all looks the same to me, Rowan. I think when we were navigating on the horses trying to find the F136 tree, that was a bit hard, especially since we didn't have any modern technology to guide us like we do now in our cars and stuff. I think we felt a bit lost at some points, but we did get there. Here we are, guys, we've made it. This is the very spot where the tree F136 stood. This is the tree they found. So the McDonald brothers traveled for three years 5,600 kilometres right from Goulburn in New South Wales all the way up here to the Kimberley. And that wheel, that is the wheel from the cart that they dragged all that way for three years. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's from a bullock wagon, which I did hear was the first vehicle, the first four-wheel vehicle to cross from East Australia to West Australia. Yeah, so they drove a 700 cattle over 
And by the time they actually got to this point, they only had 327 left. And as for horses, uh, they started out with 60 and ended up with 13. And what about food, Lauren? What did they do with food? Well, they actually ate a lot of hard biscuits, believe it or not. They carried them in big water tanks in their wagons and they carried up to six months supply at a time. We had uh, one night of dampers and <laughs> I'm still recovering. Uh, but six months of hard biscuits, I wonder what that would do to you. The entire cattle industry here in the Kimberley began there, that tree. These brothers stitched our national history, but uh, I didn't learn about them. They should be national heroes, shouldn't they? Did you learn about them at school, Hannah? No, sadly I didn't learn about them. And you know, I think that that's a really important part of our Western Australian history. So I think everybody should know. What they did was to open up this land and begin the industries that we all rely on today. Great blokes. My strongest impression of what life was like for the pioneers was that it was extremely tough. It was unbearable in certain parts and uh, every day was not without a struggle and the hope of building something better for themselves out here was um, something that they chase after every single day. I think I will view these certain comfortable traits of my city life uh, differently. I think I'll not just take the you know ease of access to public transport, technology, health uh, services for granted anymore. I learnt that I, about myself that I was way more willing to give things a go. I definitely found a lot of things quite hard. Not the strongest of people. I think that definitely gave me the lower hand. But I was willing to give everything a go and I found that really surprising about myself. I was definitely surprised by how hard some of the tasks were. I think the mud bricking was a tough one for me. Those bricks were really heavy. They're definitely to be commended for their efforts and everything up here, just with that heat, it adds an extra element that just makes everything so much harder. So I definitely have a new appreciation and a new understanding for how tough life is out here. The trip was enlightening, Rowan. It was something that I've never experienced before coming out here in the Kimberley. And I think every Australian should be able to do it. You know? If you don't know where you've come from, what your roots are, then how are we expected to carve out this, this better future and uh, really understand the, the harsh reality that they faced in order for us to live a better life? Well, it looks like our young Aussies, our city slickers, aren't quite so green anymore. We took them to the outback, out of their comfort zone, here to Fossil Downs, the black soil plains that the McDonald's came to 140 years ago. Well, our young Aussie kids, they learned how to build fences, how to sleep under the stars, how to cook themselves damper, how to ride horses, how to muster cattle, how to find water. All the essences that made Australian pioneers so great. They did it themselves, our kids, with grit and determination, just like those pioneers. Look at this. They built Australia.